All right, Notre Dame fans, we've got former Notre Dame quarterback Rick Meyer here on the show. And for maybe some of you youngsters who might not know about this guy, uh, played for the Fighting Irish quarterback from 89 to 92, 29-7-1 as a starter, three yards short of 6,000 yards passing, 41 touchdowns, and 23 interceptions, number two pick in the 93 draft to the Seahawks. Rick, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How you so, Rick, you should be a very proud papa. You've got three sons, youngest Charlie going to Stanford, Oliver to play quarterback. You got Oliver, uh, a lacrosse player at Michigan, and uh, Morris and a grad student on the lacrosse team at your alma mater. I mean, is it is it feel? What's the feeling to have you got one of your sons at Notre Dame and then two at two of the Fighting Irish's biggest rivals? Well, we're busy. We um, try to keep up with all the games. Obviously, uh, well, Charlie plays baseball still in high school, too, so all three are playing a spring sport, and the travel's a little bit crazy, the weather factors in and all that. But I- I'm proud. They, they're they rooting for each other. There's no ill will schools-wise. I mean, we're just, as parents, Stephanie and I are thrilled that uh, they're all doing well, and they're happy where they're at and where they're going, and uh, we're excited to watch them play. So Oliver six one, you're uh, Morrison six two. You're about six three. Where did Charlie get this height at six six? I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense. Um, he's probably closer to six seven, and then he's got a bunch of hair too. So um, he he's just big and always has been. And uh, we call him little boy in our house, but he's the big one now. So we're gonna talk about some. Uh, Recent current Notre Dame news to get Rick's reaction. Just yesterday, I believe it was, uh, on Tuesday, Notre Dame announces that it's scheduled um, its first ever FCS opponent, Tennessee State, and HBCU school. Rick, where where do you kind of land on this? I feel like Notre Dame fans are split, leaning towards not liking this um, Mm -hmm. because they like to be able to say, we never have played um, an FCS school. I believe there's just, what, a couple schools who can make that claim. Where do you fall on it, Rick? I honestly don't know a ton about it. I did see the news. I did read a little bit. I don't think it's a coincidence that Eddie George is there and there's a connection. I I don't know that. I'm just assuming. Um, I I think, to me, the flexibility of not being in a conference gives you options. And I know, I would imagine, uh, Jack Swarbrick, had a say in this and it felt like this was a good thing. And it's, uh, you know, something that's never happened before. I have no problem with it. I, I don't, you know, we've played smaller schools, places that don't really seem to make sense, you know, historically, but there's usually a reason and a tie. And I, you know, I think with, with Marcus and Eddie's past, I mean, maybe that's some of it, but it's just a great opportunity for them to get in front of a big audience. And I'm all, I'm all for it. Yeah, part of where I land, it's like, what what's the, the difference between, at the end of the year, it's strength the schedule between Notre Dame playing Tennessee State and, you know, Ball State. Like, what's what's the big difference at the end of it? So, I mean, Notre Dame plays a lot of cool games, Rick. I mean, Vegas against UNLV, you know, go play in Ireland. It's like bring an HBCU school up to Notre Dame. I don't know. I, th- I think it's awesome. I, I've, I've, got, uh, I've got no problems with it. Another thing that we will see here, uh, maybe not we will see, but Notre Dame reintroducing game day mass. Thoughts on that? I personally didn't even know that they didn't do that anymore. Um, I I lost track too. I I mean, you don't, I guess you see what you see on NBC pregame, but I don't, you know, maybe know exactly where they're coming from. I assume they were still doing that. Um, It's something that I think they should do. And and I, you know, have great memories of that and sitting there with all the guys and father really would, uh, make it kind of quick for us back in the day and it's it's just part of the routine it's part of the daily game day thing in my uh experience and i'm glad they're doing it so rick you're a san diego guy it looks like you're having a a beautiful day there (laughs) here on wednesday um tell us about your also a san diego guy tyler buckner um the favorite for notre dame starting quarterback job this season what was your first knowledge of tyler buckner do you remember of when that was yeah, I met Tyler and his parents. Well, she, she might have been like eight years old, pretty, pretty young, seven or eight years old. We did a little football clinic as a fundraiser for a community center here. We live in the same town. Um, I've been in touch with his parents and, and Tyler a little bit. You know, we're, we're on different schedules and stuff now, but I've been watching pretty closely and I'm, I'm rooting for him. I was excited to see him get in as much as he did last season. He says a true freshman. 
I know how that is. Um, he played some meaningful minutes and got some great experience. So, you know, I know there's a competition. Uh, I'm pulling for all those kids, but um, Tyler is a hometown guy for us. And we've known him. My, he's in between my boys a little bit. We've seen him play lacrosse and hoops and baseball and you know, all the little league stuff and everything. So I've seen him grow up, and uh, he's got a great opportunity ahead of him. When you saw him on the field last season and, and maybe a little bit in high school, I mean, what would you say? You know, what, what, what's the Skyner report on him? Like, what have you seen from him? And any expectations you have for him, assuming he is the starter this fall? Well, I've been saying since he committed and showed up on campus, I mean, super athletic kid, um, huge ceiling. Um, it felt like last year they put him in positions where it was more about running than throwing. Uh, and that, I think, will sort itself out. Uh, you're going to have to do both more on a full-time basis if, if he's a full-time guy, and I, and I hope he is. But, um, you know, my guess is both those guys are going to play. I think that's just kind of how it goes in a lot of a lot of teams for for good reasons or bad reasons. No, you got to be, you know, healthy to play all those games, and they both need to be ready. And, I, you know, I think he can handle the task. And I think with Tommy being there uh, as a former quarterback and understanding exactly what the kid's going through is, is a big bonus too. So, of course, Notre Dame as a first-year head coach in uh, Marcus Freeman leading the program. What are your expectations for this season? I mean, wh- what what may be good realistic expectations for you, Rick, You know, going into the season for Freeman? I mean, it's a tough start, right? I mean, the, the irony of, of playing Ohio State early um, isn't going to be easy. Um, it's always kind of nice to win the early ones, but they're going to jump right into the fire. So that's a little concerning, but I, I guess you find out real quick what you have. And um, I, I was really excited to see Marcus get this opportunity. I think everybody else was. The reaction was insane. Um, it was so positive. I've had a chance to meet him a few times, his wife and the kids. And uh, I, every time I see him, I'm like, I don't know when you sleep, but I hope you're getting some rest because you're sort of everywhere. And he's great with the recruiting and he's supporting the other sports. Uh, I've seen him around campus. So, um, you know, I know the kids like him and they're going to play hard, and that's all you can ask out of them. And, and hopefully the, the experience with the bowl game can, can benefit them in the future. It would have been nice to finish that thing off a little differently, but that one doesn't mean as much as some of these next ones are going to. And, and I, hope, I hope and believe they have a good group of kids and a great staff and should have a good run. Rick, this is going a little off script. This wasn't on our, our schedule. But for just from what I've heard, it seems like – Notre Dame just in these past couple of months under Marcus Freeman have been a little bit more involved with um, outreach to, to Notre Dame football alums. Is that something maybe you've noticed here re- recently? Definitely. Yes, definitely. There's been more uh, inclusion for the older guys than I've ever seen. And um, I think it's a good move. I think it's, it's nice to include everybody. And I told Marcus when I saw him and met him that I appreciated that. And he said he really wants the guys to be around the younger kids and be sort of a mentor or just a sounding board or, or somebody that in their network going forward. And I firmly believe that. And I think it's a smart move. Uh, really no knock on any of the other guys. Uh, he doesn't seem to be threatened by anybody or anything. He's including everyone. And I think the spring game weekend will show that. I would, I would guess there'll be more guys back for that one than there's ever been. And uh, I, I think that's coming straight from the top. Rick, we'll end with, um, you got to plug play like a champion today. Wine. Um, you know, just tell us about it, how long it's been going here, and, and where Notre Dame fans can pick up a bottle or two. Well, yeah, I mean, really, I've been working on the Mirror Wine stuff in, in Napa for 12, 13 years now, 14 years maybe. Um, so Play Like a Champion today came after the fact. It, it kind of branches off of Mirror because of what we've been working on and the relationship we have with the university, with the Notre Dame Family Wine Program. Um, we decided uh, there's a small group of us that have some ownership and some some control of the trademark, play like a champion today. Um, and we just wanted to have another product that you don't see in the bookstore, haven't seen anywhere in the past. So a natural, simple thing to add was the wine, which isn't that simple, to be honest. It's, there's a lot that goes into that. But uh, it's been a success. It's at the Morrison, it's going to be all over town in retail. We have a website. Um, you know, the Donor Dame Family Wine Program promotes it pretty good with the alumni base, and, and they can buy it that way too. But really... On campus, and you can get it right at Roars, right at the Morrison at that new coffee shop, the J Cafe, I think, uh, that new spot that opened up. I mean, they have it on the shelf there. So it's kind of, for the people that ask and they're going to be around, that's the easiest place to get it. But Martins and Belmont and all those places are going to have it ready for the 
for the uh, fall season and, and some of the packaging that's improving and changing as we grow this thing. It's just been a lot of fun to share with the alumni for graduations and parties and tailgates and even weddings and, and you know all kinds of holidays and stuff. So it's been a fun gift and it's a fun product and the wine's really good. Well, this has been a fun conversation, Rick. Definitely appreciate you joining the show. Have a great rest of your day, man. Okay, thanks.